inverse functions. So an inverse function is actually just a function that undoes another function. So undoing a function is the inverse function's job. Um, inverse functions are also symmetric about the y, line y equals x, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. And they also have very special notation. So if f of x is the function, then its inverse function is going to have f negative 1x. Now be really careful, this negative 1x, since it is in function notation, is not a negative exponent. It does not mean an exponent at all. It just means that this is the inverse function of f. For instance, in this example, we have h of x as the function and h inverse of x as the inverse function. As we've seen many times in class, an inverse function is when you basically are switching the x's and y's. So if this is a, function, a table for some values of the function, h of x, then the inverse function would be 1, negative 2, negative 4, 3, and 7, 5. So all you've really done is you have switched x and y. So the inverse function actually switches the x's and the y values. So we are looking at the graph of a function and its inverse. So the red graph is the function and the black graph is its inverse. As you can see, it is symmetric about the line y equals x. So here is y equals x, and here is this line of symmetry, and we are going to see that symmetry right now. So as you can notice, the ordered pairs, 0, 0. As I move up the function, the points are labeled, and you can see that the x value and the y value are literally switching places. So I've stopped it right here, and when x is 1.8, this y value is 1.8. And then when y is 3.056, the inverse function, the x is 3.056. So as you can see, this happens the, ent the entire time. So what this does is as you move along, there we go. As you move along the function, the x's and y's are switching an inverse function, and the graphs are symmetric about the line y equals x. So let's actually try to find an inverse function. So as you can notice in this example, we have that the table values have been switched. If this is a function, if f of x is the function, g of x is the inverse function, you could also write f inverse of x. Sometimes we rename it, give it a new name so it's less confusing, because people really uh, this this symbolism, this negative one symbol does kind of confuse students. Here is a picture where you can see the X's and Y's have been interchanged, just like we saw in the Desmos activity. And now we're actually going to find the inverse function. So don't forget that F of X is the same as Y. So we're really looking at Y equals X cubed plus 2. Just like in the table and on the graph, if you want to find the inverse equation, you just simply need to switch x and y. So wherever y, x is, you're going to put y, and wherever y is, you're going to put x. I'm going to rewrite this so it's a little more, little more neat. There we go. And so we are now going to switch the x and the y value, giving us x equals y, and everything else stays the same cubed plus 2. So if you notice, the only thing we switched was the x and y. Now we're going to solve for y so we can write it in this inverse notation. So the first thing we're going to do is, so we, when you're solving something, you're going in the inverse operation. y is deeply tucked down. The last thing we did was add 2. So the first thing we're going to do is subtract 2 from both sides. So you have x minus 2, and I like to put that in parentheses just to remind everyone it's together. Now, we need to get rid of y cubed, so we need to get rid of the cube so we can get y by itself. How do you undo a cube? You cube root it, or you can think of it as going to the one-third. So we're going to cube root both sides. That will give us y by itself. So y equals the cube root, and remember we cube rooted the, all of this because we had to <clears throat> do the negative two first. And then last but not least, we're going to write it in inverse notation. So if that's f of x, this is f 
inverse of x, and that equals the cube root of x minus 2. And that's how you find an inverse function. All right, have a great day.